Welcome back to the Black Sun Syndicate coverage of Star Wars Destiny. Uh, this is the uh, final of the four uh, review videos where I go over the Awakening set. Um, the, you can find the previous, the links to the previous three in the um, below in the uh, notes. Uh, so today we're going to talk about the the gray bordered cards, the um, uh, the ones that can fit in any of the other color strategies, as well as the battlefields. So we're going to start first with infantry grenades. It is a uh, a villain side rare, cost two. It is an upgrade. It has three different damage sides. It has a one ranged, a two ranged for a resource, and a special that deals damage. Uh, it also has two blanks and a resource side. Um, the, uh, the special deals two damage to each of an opponent's characters. Discard this upgrade from play. Um, so this is... Uh, obviously you're wanting to play this for damage. So the resource side, a lot of times... It is, is going to come up and you're going to go, oh, well, that might as well have been a blank because I've got to re-roll anyway. Um, the, um, again, this is another card that can deal a bunch of damage to multiple characters. Um, how does an infantry grenade uh, produce resources, by the way? I, I don't get that. I was, you know, a disrupt side? Yeah, I could think that. A discard side? I could think that because I'd be, or not a disrupt side but a discard side I'd be wanting to crap my pants too if I saw an infantry grenade um, but um, yeah it's a, it's a very powerful upgrade now this uh, one of these comes in the Kylo Ren starter so it's something you see in that deck um, and you can get it as normal rare so uh, be prepared that's one reason I only bought one of each of the starters. I didn't want twenty. I didn't want extra copies of the um, of all the starter deck rares. Um, but it's got good damage sides for its cost. Um, even if it does have the potential for blanks, and um, again, there there are a couple of cards that can recur uh, uh, um, upgrades, and you will. One of them is the battlefield that we're going to see here toward the end of this video. Um, so there is still some potential there. Um, but it, this is a decent card that I like that can fit in any villain style deck. Uh, now it does deal range damage, so it's going to be best used uh, with some of the aggressive villain decks uh, that are uh, in both uh, Rogue uh, and command um, and it to a lesser extent uh, the Night Sisters have range damage so um, they have the ability to use the infantry grenades and mesh well uh, but it's um, uh, the potential for four six or even eight damage is uh, why you would want to run a card like this and again it's better in environments where people are running three and four characters Next up is a Speeder Bike Scout. This is a three cost villain only support card. Um, it um, has three different damage, or it has two damage sides, two ranged, a three ranged for a resource, a disrupt, a shield, a blank, and a, um, uh, and a uh, special. The special reads remove a die, and you may take one additional action. So this is a permanent that if you roll the special, you get the ability to remove a die. Uh, it has damage, disrupt, and shields as well. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't technically have ambush, but it does give you additional actions. So all of that rolled into one card that is a very nice package for three resources. Now it is a support card, so it is not um, uh, it's not an upgrade. 
so um, doesn't go on your character, so you don't have the uh, discard ability. But three, although two is the sweet spot or less, three is still something that's manageable for supports. Um, you know, earlier again we talked about uh, in the command cards we were talking about um, General Veers. Um, uh, Veers gives you um, this is a support that can work with him. It's got damage sides, uh, so he can turn it to damage sides if he wishes. Uh, he has the special, which can let him remove an opponent's dice, and then let you take an additional action. So there's uh, uh, there's several uses for this. Um, I haven't tried a um, a Veer's deck because I really didn't think there was enough vehicles uh, or support cards um, that were cost effective enough. Um, so this might be one that I give uh, that I give a try. But I've heard some players talking about the Speeder Bike Scout actually being slightly better than the First Order Tie Fighter, and I'm not 100. Obviously, looking on paper. I'm not I'm not 100% sure of that um, but um, it's definitely worth something to try out and again this is something you can go in multiple decks um, the problem is um, when you have it does have the ability to remove a die and take an additional action but it's only on one of six different sides um, if it's if it's on, say, two of six different sides, um, or if you have a lot of ways to manipulate the die, you're going to make the, the card much better. So uh, take that with a grain of salt. All right, BB-8. This is a one-cost hero support droid. It is a rare. It does come in the starter deck uh, for um, Ray. Uh, be aware, I've heard people groaning because they were uh, pulling a lot of extra BB-8s. Um, let, me, uh, let me assure you folks, yes, it does. Uh, it, uh, it does suck when, you've, when you bought two copies of the starter deck and then bought uh, one box of boosters and this happens. Uh, it happens in collectible games all the time, uh, and the folks that haven't done collectible games in a long time, uh, we just learned to deal with it. <laughs> um, you're going to have um, uh, you're going to have people that are going to want extra BBH that can't afford to buy a lot of packs that you're able to trade with um, because they like the character, and it does have a decent effect. Um, he is. Um, uh, he has a focus, a disrupt, a shield, a um, uh, resource, a special, and a blank. The special lets you reroll this die and one of your other dice. And when you reroll this uh, BB-8 die, you don't uh, remove it from your pool after resolving this ability. So, uh, you basically have a built-in reroll ability um, now as a, as a support card yes he's more of a he's more of a um, a secondary use support um, he's there to help you or mess with your opponent with the disrupt uh, the shields um, I'm not sure exactly where he fits um, uh, in your deck. Uh, one is a nice cost for him. Um, he does a lot of, you know, a lot of small, interesting effects all together, and it may be something you want in uh, one of a. In many decks, it may be something you only want in certain decks, but 
it does do dice manipulation for you. Uh, so you may want a permanent of this type. Now remember he is unique and with unique cards you can only have one copy in play um, for you and one copy your opponent can only have one copy in play so it's um, um, extra copies uh, or your second copy in your deck is going to be um, have to be used for something else. Next up is Ray Staff. Uh, this is a two cost unique uh, hero weapon. It is a rare. Uh, it is a starter deck rare. This is another one that folks have been moaning and groaning about. Uh, folks, uh, us that have played collectible card games for years, yes, this is, al this is always a problem. Uh, if they have uh, unique cards to the starter deck, uh, that don't come elsewhere. Yes, it is annoying. I will grant you that it's uh, something that we've ha all had to live with, unfortunately. Uh, now, on Ray Staff, it has three different damage sides: one melee, one melee, three melee for a resource, a resource, a special, which reads remove a die showing uh, ranged or melee damage. And a blank. So, um, I think this is a fine card for force users. Uh, on the hero side, I think this is a fine card for, uh, you know, Ray, because the melee um, attacks mesh well with her melee attacks. They mesh well with. Um, the most of the blue, most of the force user characters here. Uh, it also has a special side that helps you deal with other players' dice to keep damage off you. Um, and obviously, you get the biggest boon of all in a raid deck simply because uh, you, after playing it on her, you get to take an additional action. Uh, it's it's an all around. It's a very fine card. Um, you, while you would rather have a higher uh, damage output on one of the other dice other than the three di uh, three melee for a resource, um, this is certainly a card that you probably want in those style uh, da um, uh, heavy damage decks um, where you can resolve multiple dice at once. Uh, next up is Comlink. This is a neutral upgrade equipment. Cost two. It is a again a rare. Uh, after you play this upgrade, you may reroll any number of your dice or any number of your opponent's dice. Uh, it has two focus abilities: uh, a resource plus one resource, a shield, and a blank. Um, uh, to me. Uh, this is a card that fits in control in control based strategies uh, on either side. Um, it's uh, it, uh, it effectively has two effects. Um, the effect when you play it of getting to reroll any number of your dice or any number of your opponent's dice. So it gives you uh, a basically. Uh, multi, you know, free rerolls or f uh, free rerolls of your opponent to help the control aspect uh, and then it's got the the dice the die that you can use for um, uh, to, uh, for whatever effect uh, now that, again this is another starter deck rare uh, that can be open to boosters so um, uh, again, this is another one that people have been complaining about. Um, I think it's a fine card um, for early game for control decks that we're going to see during the first several months of the game. It may be something that gets pushed out as we see better uh, copies of, or better cards as we go forward. Uh, unfortunately, that's something that happens both in living card games and collectible uh, games as well. Um, it's not something I'm com super excited about, uh, but it 
it's another card that combines multiple actions on the same card so it gives you um, uh, flexibility which is uh, uh, something nice to uh, to use going forward all right let's talk about datapad so datapad is a one cost neutral uh, upgrade uh, it has um, three separate resource sides one resource plus one resource plus one resource a special that reads turn one of your dice to a side not showing damage and two blanks so we were talking about cards and um, resources being hard to come by uh, so the higher cost cards are more difficult to come by um, resources so data pad is a card that literally says okay I'm gonna spend a resource and half of my uh, you know half of these dice conditionally uh, or excuse me uh, four out of six sides of this die conditionally have um, the ability to give me resources um, so this card to me says um, in, a, in a deck that is heavy on cost where you need resources this is a card that you want to slot two of in your deck because it helps you with the most precious thing you need and that's resources the special when you don't need the resources can you know change your dice to any other side so if you're playing a control deck you can uh, play a disrupt and um, make them discard cards you can change it to or disrupt it so you, I'm sorry uh, change a die to a discard to make them discard cards or a disrupt to make them lose the resources or you can even change a uh, a die to a special side so that you can use a special ability so this has a lot of practical applications uh, in with those two regards um, for me it fits in one of those one of those two decks I'm not sure it fits in every deck um, because you do have a limited number of, of upgrades that you want on characters and a gr more the aggressive decks you want cards that deal a lot of damage but certain builds are going to want something like this alright next up is holdout blaster this is one I've been referencing quite a bit this is a neutral rare uh, two cost uh, weapon uh, it is in the starter decks uh, but um, this is one I'm happy to open up extra copies of. Uh, I think it's great. Um, so it has uh, three different damage sides. One ranged, two ranged for resource, plus two ranged, a shield, a resource, and a blank. Uh, it has ambush, and it has redeploy. It is a very simple rare to understand. Uh, it has three. It has uh, th uh, three damage sides, although two of them uh, require some additional work, possibly. Um, having ambush means, again, you get uh, the free action. It, it's busted with Ray because you get two additional actions: you know, one for playing it on her, then the ambush action. Um, Although her damage sides don't don't mesh with that, but there are plenty of other characters that do, and the um, the holdout blaster lets you play it on a character and then immediately roll their dice into the pool. So um, there's a lot of a, a lot of work, a lot of fun there. Um, again, multiple actions uh, in a row makes it. Uh, allows you to steal tempo in, in the proper form so yeah this is a fine rare I think this is a rare that's gonna see a lot of play uh, because of 
the combination of ambush, redeploy, multiple uh, melee damage sides, uh, and you know, just the ranged is uh, it, there's more. I think there's more cards with range than there is melee um, currently. Uh, so it meshes well with a lot of different uh, deck styles. So next up is a villain event. It costs two. It's nowhere to run. Turn each of your dice showing a blank to any side. Okay. Um, so this is a card that says you've played a lot of cards in your deck that have multiple blanks on it. Um, the four trooper, uh, first order stormtrooper deck has two blanks on each side, but that has potential for a lot of damage. Um, you've got a couple of the, you've got one of the blasters that has two blanks on it, uh, but also has uh, plenty of damage on it. In a deck where you're trying to leverage using a lot of those blanks, uh, um, cards having a lot of blanks on it, where you can take and make that effect very positive, changing four, five, six dice from blanks to max damage. Uh, that really puts your opponent in a corner. Um, I only think that this card is going in, in a deck style where you're trying to manipulate your dice from blanks to something like that. And while every card has a blank, they're going to happen more often in on cards with double blanks. We've not seen anything with more than two blanks on it. Um, uh, infantry grenade is another one that has two blanks on it. So um, I think th this card fits in really to me only one deck. Uh, you can get it get uh, you know with every card or nearly every card having a blank. Th this has got potential in in more than those decks, but I would I would rather be wanting to use this. Uh, to maximize uh, uh, maximize its usage. So, for me, for Stormtrooper deck, this is a two-up. <laughs> Alright, so next up is Daring Escape. This is a two-cost event for heroes. It's, it has ambush. Reroll any number of an opponent's dice. Then remove all of their dice showing blanks. Um, so this is a, this is a fine control, this is a fine card. Um, it controls your opponent's dice, it removes any of them that they reroll for, uh, that hit blanks. Um, so you know that idea of the Stormtrooper deck I was talking about? Yeah, you could get hit with this and lose all your dice and you could be a sad puppy. Um, this one is a little dependent on what your opponent re-rolls, um, um, but it, can't, it has potential to remove one or more dice, uh, and you get an additional action. Two is a little expensive. Um, you know, th this is a card you see in the um, in the hero deck, uh, uh, the ray deck, um, and it's perfectly fine. Um, there may be better overall options for you um, than this card, but being able to have the potential to remove multiple dice is probably going to come with a caveat anyway. Um, so, um, this is a card with considering it has ambush. I would consider for the Han deck. Um, and I'm not really sure what other decks I would consider it for um, right now. Uh, so next up is a is a group of starter deck cards um, that are neutral affiliation that um, uh, that are uh, have interesting effects. So the first one is aim, cost one. Um, 
turn one of your dice to a side showing range damage. Um, this is one of those uh, early game filler cards that is designed to go in your deck to help you manipulate your own dice uh, if you're playing a, a ranged heavy deck. Um, this is um, depending on how many slots that you're wanting to um, dedicate to that type of uh, thing in your deck you may want copies of this in your deck. Um, I would rather have something a little more flexible if at all possible uh, because I personally don't know how many you, uh, how many slots you're going to need for your deck. Um, certainly um, maybe aggressive decks run out of uh, good dice manipulation spots uh, or good uh, dice manipulation cards for their color uh, and they're only running a single color they may want to run this um, not sure going forward if this is a card be after we start getting uh, set two or set three if this is a card that's gonna stay in those type of decks it is a fine effect. It does exactly what you want it to do uh, in a ranged heavy deck. Um, but again, I would rather have something that is a little more um, versatile or, or a little more powerful than this. Okay, so all in. This again, I uh, pardon for the images. Cost one. It is a neutral event. Resolve any number of your dice in the order of your choice. Now this is a card again that allows you to resolve multiple things at one time. Um, if you are a deck that hasn't synergized your melee and range damage uh, where you're just melee damage or just range damage then you might be in a market for this to resolve three or four dice at once to keep your opponent from disrupting what you're trying to do whereas a deck that runs multiple um, melee cards or multiple uh, effects that hit melee they can resolve all of those at once if they need to be So while I normally like a lot of the resolve multiple effect cards, uh, I think this one is only useful if you've got different numbers of damage, different um, sets of damage between melee and range that you want to resolve consecutively where you normally are unable to do so. Or if you are running a deck that has multiple plus ranged or plus melee damage where you're trying to make sure that you get to resolve all of those without your opponent affecting which you can and can't do that might be something but um, honestly I don't really think that don't think there's many slots for this in many decks so block this is a two cost event it's neutral uh, remove all of opponents die showing melee damage uh, so I'm I'm going to put this in the in the, the pile of meta cards in a um, in a melee heavy meta this is a card that you 
might want a single copy of um, to remove multiple dice all at one time. Two is a lot for an event, so we have to be careful about costs uh, in our decks. Um, but this can easily wipe out somebody's turn, a aka what we call a blowout in, in most card games. If they're running multiple characters that are melee damage focused. That being said, it's not a card that you probably want in every deck, and it is only effective against melee damage. Uh, so again, I will put this in the meta card slot, uh, and if the meta goes that direction, we can slot some of these in. I probably don't want more than one. Uh, usually one blowout is enough uh, to really swing uh, a, a game or tempo of a game um, but um, it is effective for what it does close quarters assault so this is another starter deck card count the number of dice you have showing melee damage discard that many random cards from an opponent's hand <clears throat> okay so um, Again, we were talking about a melee heavy metagame. Um, if you are a deck that is wanting to go melee heavy, you know, Grievous Dooku, um, uh, Kylo Ren, Couple Night Sisters, or Elite Kylo Ren, Couple Night Sisters, etc., uh, where you have you know you're playing lightsabers you're playing a bunch of different cards that are me dropping melee damage this is an easy way to empty your opponent's hand and um, this is an easy way at the end of the game, or your opponent's out of out of uh, deck. Okay, well I'm going to discard, you know, discard the rest of the cards out, out of your hands. Uh, so this is a a quick way to finish off your opponent uh, at the end of the game. <coughs> so this does quite a bit of damage. Um, it's best in a melee centric deck where you can get. You know, two, three, maybe four dice. That's going to be the majority of their hand. So they either have to spend it or lose it. Uh, and they don't know when it's coming. So that's sort of the surprise of it. Um, so in, you know, that type of focused deck, I would, um, uh, I would certainly, certainly be interested in looking at this card uh, as a way to disrupt my opponent's plans. Next up is Dodge. Uh, where uh, uh, Greedo is trying to um, uh, cover himself. Uh, cost 2, it is a neutral common event. Remove all opponent's die showing range damage. Uh, similar to block, this is going to have a similar effect. It's going to be better served in a ranged heavy um, format. So if you're in a ranged heavy meta, this might be a card you'd want a, uh, a single slot of. Um, two is a lot for an event. Um, again, because it's uh, in context, it's a whole turn's worth of resources. Uh, some decks can play it better or can produce resources better than others. Uh, so it may be perfectly fine. Um, but again, I think this goes into a a meta slot in your deck and I'm afraid there's not going to be a whole lot of meta slots uh, available unless you've got a lot of flexibility in you know th half to three quarters of your deck next up is flank uh, flank is a neutral uncommon event it costs one play only if you have more ready characters than your opponent 
remove one of that opponent's dice. So uh, this is an efficient event that both sides can play, any color can play it, and it's uh, it's used uh, to um, it removes your opponent's dice and the only caveat is you have more ready characters than your opponent. Um, so if you are regularly playing a three character or four character deck in a in a field of um, lesser number character decks this is a wonderful way to remove an opponent's die for the cost of one resource nothing else you don't have to spot um, you don't have to spot a particular color you don't have to remove one of your dice you just have to have more ready characters and it's a situation that you should be able to set up now again this is a skill intensive card if you're playing uh, if both of you started with the same number of, re of characters in play you have to know when exactly to play it because otherwise it's a complete dud take cover so this is a zero cost neutral uh, common event give a character one shield um, for decks that don't have a lot of ways to give shields um, or decks that want extra ways to give shields uh, this is a this is a fine event now blue is probably going to play defensive stance over take cover um, unless you're playing a Qui-Gon deck where you may want both copies uh, both it and take cover um, uh, this red is going to play field medic to heal damage but it may still want some number of cards that give shields uh, if it's playing a defensive style game uh, so it this is another card a take cover that you can play in that in that style deck um, this is a a fine card in uh, in the early uh, year of a game that's gonna that is going to be useful in a lot of different decks and at some point it will get outclassed in each color to the point where it's you know sets in a box or a binder uh, but you have to have cards like this in early sets to be able to get uh, be able to play a functional game um, it's perfectly fine for that so now we get to the battlefields now the battlefields are unique uh, each player builds a deck and can their deck has one battlefield along with their starting uh, with their characters to start and play the, the to determine who is the um, who gets the battlefield uh, each player rolls all of their character dice into their pool uh, the player with the highest total gets the decision um, if they choose um, to use their battlefield uh, then their uh, then the opponent gets two shields uh, they can put those shields on any character on any one character or any number of their characters so uh, if they start two characters they can put one shield on each they can put two shields on one character um, if they if they if a player wins the role and chooses that the we use the uh, opponents um, battlefield then uh, then you get two shields uh, now this is an important effect uh, to realize some decks are going to be building around battlefields um, battlefields are scary because whichever battlefield is in play you have the ability to claim the battlefield and resolve its effect uh, whatever battlefield ends up in play you're going to get 
uh, is going to be a double-edged sword. It can be great for you, or it can be detrimental to you. Um, and that's what that this was so elegant in, uh, in about this game is the battlefield is important uh, and it can be both a powerful effect and a detrimental effect at the same time so command center this is uh, uh, the first one it is a uh, claim each opponent discards the top two cards of their deck so I was talking about a mill strategy earlier um, you're playing a long game control deck uh, and you play this say you play this as your battlefield um, if you don't get your battlefield, uh, do you have enough cards in your deck that you're winning? Um, winning with that strategy. Um, if you end up with this battlefield, you're playing a long game control deck. Can your can you mill, still mill out your opponent if he claims the battlefield multiple times instead of you? So there's a lot of tricky questions to answer. Um, right now, um, it's difficult to build around a battlefield because it can be so inconsistent. Um, you know, we showed the one card that lets you uh, swap battlefields. Um, but otherwise, you don't have a lot of control over a battlefield. Other than saying, okay, I can claim the battlefield, but then you get every action for the rest of the turn. And that's dangerous. Uh, battlefields are going to be tricky because they're going to require a, a lot of tight play to use correctly. And I don't think any of us have a full grasp on how that's going to work. Um, uh, so for the most part many of us are going to build decks with um, battlefields that can be a boon for us but don't really hurt us if the opponent gets it simply because we certainly don't want if we put a broken one out there and then your opponent gets it all the time and gets the ability that we're looking for, then we could have problems. All right, Echo Base. This is a. Uh, uh, it has a claim of give a character shield. Um, if you are an aggressive deck, uh, I don't. This is not a car. I don't think this is a battlefield that you want to try to play with. Um, you don't want to give your opponent free health, basically. Um, if you're a control deck, uh, like a mill strategy, this may is perfectly fine. If your opponent gets shields, that's fine. You're trying to mill them out anyway. So having the extra shields is probably not going to hurt. Emperor's Throne Room. <laughs> okay. Turn uh, Claim is turn one of your dice to a side showing a special ability. Then you may resolve that die. Okay, so this is one that's sort of in the upper, has the potential of being an upper power level echelon card. But it's one that if you end up playing that card, playing that battlefield, and you end up with winning the die roll and starting with it, it actually can cause you as much anxiety as it does your opponent. Because if they claim the battlefield and they have things like Force Choke and Mind Probe and um, uh, immob uh, Immobilize is not a great example, but uh, um, Poe Dameron and Millennium Falcon, you know, just to name some of them, um, Crime Lord you don't want them claiming the battlefield um, 
so in, really until we can find uh, a way as players to have a good grasp on the idea of battlefields and how best to control them, how best to approach your turn, uh, this is one I'm going to leave in the binder. Um, because it's one of those that I'm like, yeah, I don't want my opponent using the ability. Frozen Waste. Um, claim, remove a character die. So this is a, a starter deck uh, card. Uh, so it's one that you, we've probably seen quite a bit uh, for many of you. Some of us uh, didn't have a uh, release event within four and a half hours of his hometown. So, uh, I am, for those of you that have played with the physical cards and dice, um, you might uh, feel the wrath of the dark side. Um, I'm very jealous, I will say. Um, this one is, um, th this is one that's, that's simple and that is useful for you. Uh, it does help your opponent, um, but it's not completely detrimental, just not a complete blowout most of the time if they claim it. This is one you'll probably see a lot of, especially early, um, since it has a decent effect without an effect that blows you out completely. Uh, Imperial Armory de on Death Star. Claim an upgrade from your hand decreasing its cost by one um, <clears throat> so where I this is an interesting uh, battlefield uh, it allows you to play an upgrade for one less cost without having to discard an upgrade uh, but as a claim effect, since you don't get another action for the rest of the turn, normally, uh, that upgrade gets to sit there, and you don't get to roll its dice, you don't get to resolve its dice this turn. So I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around how this would work. How uh, good this card would be. Um, I, you know, normally allowing my opponent to play cards cheaper from their hand would be a detriment, but since you, most of the time, once you claim it, you're done, then I think there's going to be some, some rules dealing with ambush, uh, on, on some of the cards, um, I think Ray is also one that, that has some rules questions with it. Um, do they get to take additional actions, etc. Uh, and hold out blaster. So this is one I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around with. I, if you're looking for uh, another one of these that seems rather safe uh, to play in your deck, this one seems fine. It's probably not one that I would use because I, I'm not sure how much it actually helps you currently. Alright, next up is Jedi Temple. Look at an opponent's hand and discard up to two events of your choice from it. So, this is another card that I like the control aspect of it, but I really dislike the fact that if my opponent claims it, they get to A, look at my hand, and B, discard two events from that hand. And with no direct or easy way to keep the battlefield from getting claimed by my opponent, You know, there's no card effect that does it. I'm very wary about running a card like this as my battlefield. 
even in a mill strategy where that's what I want to do is mill you for, for card after card after card. All right, uh, next up is Rebel War Room. Claim, resolve one of your dice. If it has a resource cost, you do not have to pay it. Um, uh, this is actually about a field um, that I like. Um, it's um, it lets you circumvent a resource cost on a on one of your um, on one of your dice uh, that you'd normally have to pay. Um, so I certainly think it you'd want to run a card like this in um, Azure Battlefield in decks that that have characters like hired guns that are going to cost you extra resources um, with, as this is a way to circumvent it or you know um, it's um, or you know it, it could be you know a simple a simple card that works that works fine now it does it technically hurt you yeah if your opponent um, uh, gets it then yeah they could resolve uh, you know one of their th three damage or f uh, you know four melee damage with a with a flamethrower uh, and that's technically bad for you but timing is everything as far as those go so next up is most icely spaceport you claim return one of your upgrades in play to your hand to gain a resource Okay, so uh, this one has pluses. Um, it lets you reset one of your upgrades. Uh, which is you know, it, which is fine. Uh, obviously you don't get to play it again until next turn. Uh, but it does gain you a resource, so you start the, the turn next turn with a resource. Uh, it lets you do something else that's very interesting. If you're playing this, and you've got a character that's next to dead, it's got a upgrade on it that you don't want it to die and doesn't have redeploy, you can simply bounce it. To gain an extra resource, if your opponent kills the character, then you can deploy it on the other character. So this one has a lot of potential. Um, the Separatist base, uh, members of the Black Sun uh, know exactly where this base is. It is on our home planet of Mustafa. Claim each opponent chooses and deals one unblockable damage to one of their characters. Um, to me this is a uh, this is a uh, battlefield that you want to play in a deck where you have three or four characters um, where you have lots of um, uh, damage that you can sort of spread around uh, and is uh, it's unblockable damage so it's uh, can be helpful against heavy shields uh, decks um, it, um, it it can and it can hurt you but if you're able to spread the damage around it's not going to hurt you quite as bad as if your opponent's playing a two-character deck um, where he can't spread the damage as well as normal. And the the last battlefield and the final card in uh, the Awakening set is Starship Graveyard on Jakku. It is a starter deck only card. Choose a supporter upgrade in your discard pile and place it on top of your deck. So um, this is the one that comes in the Ray Starter, uh, and it obviously, this is one that plays off her ability. 
Um, if you get an upgrade on a character, especially a character like Ray, where you're getting action after action after, you know, m massive amount of actions, and then, you know, you may want to pick up that upgrade again. You can easily claim once you've uh, you know once you've got such a tempo advantage going you can always claim the battlefield put that upgrade back on top of your deck you're going to draw it um again and then be able to reuse this ability you know do it again on the next turn uh, or play that upgrade on a different character um in upgrade or support heavy decks uh I would look certainly look at this being um, a battlefield um, that is mostly safe. Uh, obviously, a, a mill deck you don't want this because your opponent can. This is obviously helping them stay alive longer. Uh, but I think those the style of up, you know, lots of upgrades, lots of supports, um, trying to take advantage of. Uh, Things like uh, Poe Dameron's special ability. Or, you know, like I said with Ray, uh, it's going to it's going to get a lot of use. And if your opponent recurs a supporter upgrade, it may or may not be that bad. Alright, so I want to thank all of you for listening in to the uh, Black Sun Syndicate a um, a division of the Colot Information Network. Uh, you can find us online at colotinformant.com. There's a link in the upper right hand corner. Um, and you can find us on Twitter at colot underscore informant. Uh, we are also on Facebook. Uh, I plan on obviously doing more Star Wars Destiny uh, going forward. But this was a nice little review to to give my my th my theory crafting and my experience playing on tabletop simulator. If you guys have not downloaded that little gem from uh, Steam, you might want to look at it. The Destiny pack is a free pack you can get once it's been downloaded. Um, it at least gets you familiar with the the game and mechanics if you haven't played it yet physically. Um, and so, um, until next time, may the Force be with you.